Welcome to Fast Facts with Phyllis. Let's start learning. The practice of photographing the deceased in lifelike poses, also known as post-mortem photography, emerged in the Victorian era and became a crucial part of the grieving and memorialization process. This peculiar custom might seem macabre from a modern perspective, but in the context of the time, it was seen as a deeply personal, touching, and even necessary practice. During the Victorian era, the high child mortality rate and generally lower life expectancy meant that death was a more pervasive part of everyday life than it is today. Death was not hidden away, but confronted directly, woven into the fabric of daily existence. The mourning process was a public affair, with explicit rules and stages, and was not something to be rushed or abbreviated. Mourning rituals provided a socially sanctioned time to grieve and offered a process by which the bereaved could begin to cope with their loss. In this context, post-mortem photography emerged as a powerful tool of memorialization. Photography was a new technology at the time, a fascinating innovation that offered people the chance to freeze a moment in time. It was an expensive luxury, so it wasn't as commonplace as it is today. Often, a post-mortem photograph would be the only image a family had of their deceased loved one. This was especially true for infants and young children. The photograph would serve as a tangible and long-lasting memento of the departed, a way to remember their face after death had taken them away. The subjects of these photographs were posed as if they were still alive, often with eyes eerily painted onto their closed eyelids. They might be depicted in a peaceful sleep or engaged in a familiar activity. They might be shown surrounded by their favorite toys or dressed in their best clothes. The purpose of these lifelike poses was to create an image of peaceful passing, of a transition to a restful and serene afterlife. It was a way to soften the harsh reality of death, to make the end seem less final. Family members would sometimes pose alongside their deceased loved ones, holding them, or even pretending to interact with them. The intimacy of these photographs speaks volumes about the depth of grief experienced by the survivors. The photographs served as a form of catharsis, a physical representation of their bond with the deceased, which death could not sever. There's a depth of pathos in these images that speaks to the human desire to keep our loved ones with us, even in death. They tell a story of a society's attempt to reconcile the permanence of death with the impermanence of life. These photographs, as disconcerting as they may appear to modern sensibilities, are undeniably poignant. In many ways, the Victorians' confrontation of death stands in stark contrast to how many modern Western societies deal with the subject, often preferring to keep death out of sight and out of mind. Despite the shift in societal attitudes, the basic human need to remember our deceased loved ones persists. Although we might not take post-mortem photographs, we memorialize the dead in other ways, such as through funerals, obituaries, and memorials. In the end, the Victorian tradition of post-mortem photography, unsettling though it may be, offers a unique window into a society wrestling with the universal human experience of death, grief, and memory. It invites us to reflect on our own mortality and on the ways we choose to remember and honor those who have passed on.